TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it. This is the warning screen. These topics might be in disgust. You might take offense to it, but hey, there's a warning. Uh, Twitch.com, if you do want to catch a live, the username at the bottom of the screen. And no, I do not have a green screen right now because I am traveling. No green screen at the moment. I'll have one tonight, though, because I'll be back home. Uh, don't forget, man... They do have a Patreon, and we do have a um, merch. <laughs> we got merch. Oh, dang, I forgot what I was trying to say. Anyway, man, let's get into it. This is TLDR News. This is why the UK is actually the most pro-migrant country in Europe. Never heard this take. Let's, let's, you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's get into it, I guess. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. At first glance, the UK looks like one of the most anti-migrant countries in the world. Parliament is currently tussling over a bill that would allow asylum seekers to be preemptively deported to Rwanda. British cabinet ministers- Dang, hold on, that, like, wait, what? Asylum seekers will be deported to Rwanda? Why there though? That's, that's a tough, that's tough. Okay. To decry the failure of multiculturalism and fearmonger about segregated neighborhoods. The Home Office has become renowned for both its incompetence and the so-called hostile environment policy. A set of administrative measures designed to make staying in the United Kingdom as difficult as possible for anyone without permanent residence in the hope that they voluntarily leave. And Man, of course- so I couldn't even come there just to, you know, kick it for a long period of time, huh? This is TDR News. Let me sub up, man. Remember, if you ever see a video on my channel and you don't want it there, just leave a comment. Say, take it down, and that'll be done. Of course, Brexit has been widely interpreted by both the British and European media as an expression of English nativism, motivated by anxieties about migration and freedom of movement. But scratch below the surface, and it becomes clear that the UK isn't quite as insular as it's often made out to be. While British voters are indeed skeptical about the number of asylum seekers arriving via small boats, which is what the Rwanda bill aims to reduce, they're generally far more positive about regular migration than their European counterparts. Suella Braverman had to walk back her multiculturalism comments after they were ridiculed in the British press, not least because Braverman herself, as the daughter of a Mauritian and Kenyan immigrants with Indian roots, embodies a certain definition of British multiculturalism. And while it's of course true that Brexit voters were motivated by anxieties about freedom of movement, they were generally concerned about European migration specifically, and non-EU migration into the UK has actually soared in the past few years, thanks in part to generous and popular schemes for refugees from Hong Kong and Ukraine. According to census data from 2021, roughly one in six people living in England and Wales were born abroad, a larger fraction than America or any large European country. No, nah, facts. Facts. Like I be look like when I first start got when I first start when I first got into doing reactions, like nobody was originally from the UK, like or England or any like everybody was like their family was came there and then they grew up there. But they had roots somewhere else. That's how I that's how that's from me looking on the outside and that's how I envisioned the UK. You know what I'm saying? Just a melting pot. Like more so of a melting pot than America. And I'm an American. Country except Germany. And this number will only increase as net migration continues to rise. So in this video, we're going to look at why Britain is actually, well, really good at immigration. Well, that was just the intro? by just taking a look at what the UK actually thinks about immigration. 
Contrary to the stereotype, Britons actually hold some of the most pro-immigrant views in the developed world. In 2018, YouGov polling found that Brits were more likely than basically any other European country to say that the benefits of immigration outweigh the cost. Dang, Denmark. <laughs> so the ones behind me, it says Sweden, Poland, France, and Denmark. Denmark, it's still low, but dang. And more likely to be in favor of both skilled and unskilled immigration. Oh, Italy is wildin'. Okay, so wait, the green is good, wait. Benefits and the cost outweighs the benefits. Okay, Italy and Sweden, dang. But I heard a lot about Sweden women like, you know, let me tell you. According to analysis by the Financial Times of data from the World Value Survey and European Value Survey, Britons are more likely than their European or American peers to say that immigrants have had a positive impact on their country, more likely to want an immigrant as their neighbour, and more likely to disagree with the idea that employers should prioritise native Brits. The only EU <coughs> countries to express more pro-immigrant sent- I think you should prioritise whoever you feel is going to do the job best. <laughs> than the UK on these questions were Sweden and Germany. But this polling was done in the late... People who feel entitled to the job, like, oh, I should get this job because that that's a red flag for me. That's going to... You feel so entitled to get this job, you might not do it good. If you got some humility about it, like, oh, my God, I need this job. I, like, you might work a little bit harder in my mind, like... 2010s, and both countries have since experienced a significant uptick in anti-immigrant sentiment, evidenced by the rise of the AFD and the Sweden Democrats. Conversely, the UK has actually become more pro-immigrant since the 2010s. The number of Brits citing immigration as one of their top political priorities peaked in 2016, despite the fact that net migration is still rising. Similarly, the number of Brits saying that immigrants are good for the economy and the UK more widely has risen dramatically in the past decade. And in 2022, yeah, for the first time in recorded history, a majority of Brits say that they either wanted migration to remain the same or increase. Again, despite rising net migration. And despite all the panic talk about small boats, polling by British Future suggests a growing number of Brits want a fair asylum system even if it means more refugees. Now, there are a couple of caveats worth mentioning. A significant share of conservative voters still see immigration as a top issue, and young men are significantly less progressive on this issue than young women. Nonetheless, because there aren't that many conservative voters left, and because these young men are still becoming more pro-immigration, just not at the same rate as their female peers, in the aggregate, Brits are still some of the most migrant-friendly people around, it's always the women that are progressive and moving the dial forward. Which is one of the reasons that, at the same time as the anti-immigrant right is on the rise in Europe, Labour is surging in the polls, and the Conservatives' escalating anti-migrant rhetoric has done basically nothing to help them. And it's not just that Brits are positively disposed towards migrants either. Migrants actually do better in the UK than in other places. University-educated migrants in the UK are basically as likely as their British peers to find employment, while those in the EU have an employment rate 10 percentage points lower than equivalently well-educated Europeans. Less well-educated immigrants actually have an employment rate 12% higher than their British-born equivalents, and on average, male immigrants actually have a slightly higher employment rate than British-born men. Migrant children also get better grades in the UK than they do in Europe. Kids who don't speak English as the first language actually do better than British kids at GCSE level, and immigrants- I feel like that's the same in America though too. You know what I'm saying? Think like you, you know, grow up different. You, you know, first generational people that are first. first if your mom and dad were first to be come in the country, and then they have kids, of course they're gonna push you because you got it. You're the next. You gotta make it. You have to. You gotta bring on the bacon because hey, listen, we ain't have them opportunities back in our day. Children also do say. better than British kids at PISA tests. The reverse is true in the rest of Europe. In Germany, for instance, immigrants' children Eager scored 436 points in the latest maths test, way below the 495 for native Germans. In the UK, 77% of children from immigrant backgrounds expect to go to university, compared with just 62% of native children. In France and Germany, again, the pattern is reversed. The educational and economic success of British immigrants is in large part down to the fact that the UK is also very good at integrating migrants.
According to analysis by Gemma Catney, a geographer at Queen's University in Belfast, literally every ethnic group in England and Wales becomes less segregated and better integrated every time the UK does the census, i.e. every 10 years. Similarly, analysis by the Financial Times found that only a handful of British cities are anywhere near as segregated as American cities like New York. And unlike other countries, the UK's most prosperous region, London, also has one of its largest migrant populations. So why is the UK- It also has one of its most crime heavy, or you know, that's where they say all the crime happens, huh? Oh. He's so good at immigration. Well, when it comes to integration, it probably helps that English is the world's most common second language. But it's also perhaps because, and we don't have time to go into it in too much detail, while most of Europe saw immigrants as an economic stopgap for post-war labour shortages, in the late 19th and early 20th century, the British political establishment saw immigration as a means for maintaining imperial influence, and so-called British subjects were allowed to come and live permanently in the UK until really the 60s, which means the UK has a longer history of permanent migration, and most of its European peers. That's not the end of this story either. So if you want to dive deeper into this and other stories, we have an exciting announcement. That's because it was revealed in okay, bro, that was Variety, no less, that we're building a new product with our partners at Nebula called Nebula. All right, well, I got the information I needed. But now that's pretty interesting, like, to see the other side of it, because all I see is these conservative... People telling me about this and that and that and this. Did I say that right? Or is it the extreme people? See, I don't know. And me, I'm not there. I don't know anything. So I just be, you know, watching the videos and getting my information and, you know, develop my, developing my slight opinion in my head. But, you know, at the same time, I still don't be having enough information to vocalize how I be feeling about anything. So these videos like this really are informative, man. Tell her, leave a like, comment, I'm gone.